Hi everybody, Bill1911 here. Today we're going to talk about a topic that's going to get pretty involved in a lot of stuff. I'm going to be explaining the different types of operating systems on semi-automatic firearms. Um, there are three types. There is direct blowback, there is delayed blowback, and there is gas operated. So we're going to talk about those three topics, but before we do, we're going to have to discuss in a little bit of detail what actually happens inside the gun when you pull the trigger. This is a pretty misunderstood concept. Uh, quite often people believe that the minute you pull the trigger on the gun, that's when re recoil takes place. It does not. There are a whole chain of events that take place before you feel any recoil in the handgun. Okay, I'm holding in my hand here a cartridge case. Now, what I wanted to explain is that there are actually four components to a loaded round. This one is not loaded. This one's already been fired. Um, there is, of course, the bullet, which goes into the end of the cartridge case here. All right. And then there's the cartridge case itself. Okay. And then on the back end of it, you can see right here is the primer. All right. Okay. You also have gunpowder inside the cartridge case. Now those are the four components that make up a loaded round. So, I've drawn a, a well it's not great art, but um, this is a picture of a gun barrel, supposedly, with the cartridge case in it and a bullet. All right. I haven't bothered to draw the gunpowder because that would be kind of a waste of time. But I did draw the little primer back here. And on the top up here, I've placed a graph that will show you what pressure does inside of the cartridge case as the bullet moves down that barrel. It's a timeline of events that are happening inside the barrel. So the first thing that happens is the firing pin comes in and strikes that primer. And it makes it go bang. So when that happens, it shoots fire up into the cartridge case, up into here, which causes ignition, okay? That causes the gunpowder to start burning. Now, gunpowder does not actually explode. Smokeless gunpowder does not explode. It burns, all right? And that's an important concept. So at our ignition point, pressure inside this cartridge case is at zero, but as that powder starts to burn, it very rapidly comes up. Then the cartridge case will actually swell up a little bit and engage the sides of the chamber. Okay, It will actually form that cartridge case to the dimensions of your chamber. And at that point, the bullet starts to move forward. It gets to the point where it starts to engage the rifling. It actually leaves the cartridge case and then engages the rifling in the throat of the barrel. At that point, right here in the graph, pressure is pretty high. But it jumps up a little bit because now that bullet has engaged some resistance and pressure in this area between the, the back of the cartridge case and the back of the bullet finishes its climb up to about 100% of its potential. Now, the bullet keeps moving down the barrel, but as it moves down the barrel to these different points, the pressure is maintained at that high level. So pressure stays up there because the gunpowder is actually still burning and creating expanding gas that causes that pressure to stay up in that area between the back of the bullet and the back of the cartridge case. So as it continues down the barrel and it maintains pressure all the way until we get to the end of the barrel, and then the bullet leaves the barrel. And as soon as it breaks the plane at the end of that barrel, pressure at the muzzle end, okay, at the front end of the barrel, goes to zero 
for a brief instant while pressure on the back is still up. Okay? So you're going to have all the pressure that's inside that barrel is suddenly going to hit the back of that cartridge case, and that's the recoil. That's when recoil actually happens, is when the bullet actually leaves the barrel. It's also when you actually hear the bang, okay, because all that expanding gas escapes out into the air very rapidly and goes boom, all right? So uh, that's the principle of what causes recoil. That's that blow back against the back of that cartridge case. So with that, we're going to now take a look at some guns and see how it actually affects the guns themselves. All right, so this is a Ruger Mark III 22 gal caliber pistol. Um, I happen to like this gun a lot. It's a great gun to shoot targets with. And 22 caliber is about as inexpensive a, a round as you're going to get. So it's kind of cool to shoot the 22. Um, one of the other advantages with the 22 is that recoil is so light on these. It's so, so little recoil that you don't develop a lot of bad habits when you're shooting it. Um, it's just, it's a lot of fun. So, as is always the case, the first thing we want to do is verify that there is no ammunition in this gun. Okay, we also want to make sure that there is no ammunition present in the work area where we're working on these guns. Okay, so, direct blowback. All right, that's what this gun operates on, all right? So when ignition happens, the slide just kind of sits there up against the back of that cartridge, all right? Bullet moves down the barrel like we discussed, and when it exits, we get just for an instant full pressure pushing back on that cartridge, and it bangs into that slide and forces it open, okay? Then the cartridge case ejects from the gun, the slide comes back forward, picks up the next round out of the magazine, and pushes it into the chamber. And that's all there is to direct blowback. It's just from the pressure that's in that chamber area as that bullet leaves the barrel. Okay? So direct uh, blowback is about as simple as you're going to get. I mean, it just doesn't get any simpler. So from there, we're going to move on to something that's a little bit more complicated, and that is the delayed blowback system. Okay, I've got two different guns. Now, the, believe it or not, the mechanics are different, but the operating system is the same. These two guns are both delayed blowback systems. You've seen the 1911 before. We're going to open it up and take a little better look at it in a minute. This is a Beretta Mini Cougar. Now, it's a neat little gun, and I'm going to take it apart again in a minute, and I'll let you see how I do that. Um, it has that same disassembly lever that a lot of the Berettas do. It's a, it's a neat way to take a gun apart. All right, so I removed the recoil spring and guide rod from the gun so that I can better illustrate how this blowback system works. Now... If you'll look, let me get some light on it, so hopefully we can see it a little bit better. Okay. All right, now, if you look, you can see the barrel has this locking lug right here that's kind of protruding down, all right? That's in the barrel lockup position. So what happens is we pull the trigger, like we said before, bullet travels down to the end of the barrel, and we start seeing recoil. Now, as the slide starts to move back, the barrel moves with it for just a little bit, so they're, they're actually locked together right now. Once it reaches a certain point, the barrel actually twists inside the gun. I hope you can see it doing that. Okay, that barrel is twisting. And then, after that slight delay of that slide coming back just a little bit, with that little bit of a delay, that barrel rotates, and then it releases from the barrel and the slide continues back, pulls the cartridge out of the gun, ejects it, and then picks up the next cartridge, loads it into the barrel as it comes forward, and then the barrel 
rotates again into that locked firing position. It's called the battery position. Okay, so now I'm going to take it apart and put it back together again with a recoil spring, and I'll show you what I was talking about. Okay. Okay, so once you get your lever down out of the way, slide the gun apart, just like the, a lot of liberettas do, and you can see here how that lug fits into this spiral shaped, or actually kind of canted little cam in here. Now this little lump right here fits into that cam, and as it moves up and down, it rotates that barrel in and out of the battery position, okay? So that's how that all works. So to put it back together, we're going to put the guide rod back through here and reassemble the gun just like that. We're going to slide it back together. Okay. Get back in there, you. And rotate that lever into place and we're locked back together. All right, now let's take a look at the 1911. And again, I've taken the recoil spring out of it so that I can manipulate it slowly. Now with this one, the barrel isn't going to rotate. It is going to drop downward as the slide comes back. But again, for just a second, the two of them travel together, okay, for just a little bit. And then you can see how that barrel dropped down. All right, it's kind of hard to see it. All right, let me get it a little closer. See how that barrel just drops down that minute amount, and then that unlocks it and allows the slide to continue traveling backwards. Once that barrel drops down, then the slide can move the rest of the way back out of that battery position, picks up the next cartridge, again, loads it up as it comes forward, and that barrel pops back up into the battery position. Now, it's got grooves, as we've talked about before, around the top of this, this uh, barrel that lock it to the slide. So I'm going to take it apart now and show you those. All right, so <clears throat> inside Take the barrel bushing out, and this guy slides out through the front. All right, so inside the slide, I'll get it at the right angle so you can see the light in it real good. All right, there we go. Inside that slide, you can see that there are grooves right here. Okay, those grooves match these grooves on the top of the barrel. So that's what drops into place when it goes into battery. When the barrel is all the way forward, okay, it's up into the battery position where it's engaged in the slide. Now, there's a link pin in there that I'll show you in just a second. And as this comes back, the barrel drops down out of that battery position, okay? Now, the link is this little round piece right here on the bottom, okay? And as you can see, it moves back and forth, all right? That's your link pin right there. So that's it. That's how the delayed blowback system works. All right, this is the IMI, um, Israeli Military Industries, uh, Desert Eagle. Okay. All right, right about here inside this barrel, there's a little hole, okay? And it is a passageway that goes all the way up to the front, and it comes out of this center hole right here in the barrel, okay? That hits this piston right here, and that causes that barrel to push back, or I mean the slide to push back against those springs and go all the way back, all right? So the gas-operated system, it also has a slight delay to when it comes back and pulls that round out of the chamber, okay? So we're gonna put her back together real quick. Okay, that's all there was to it. 
and I'm going to try to show you that as it comes back, well, I don't think I can do it with the barrel on. Okay, anyway, the slide comes back, again, extracts the cartridge, picks up the next one, and then brings it back forward, okay? So that process is all accomplished by that gas that goes through that little port that we talked about inside the barrel, runs up through and hits that center piston, and it just shoves the whole thing backward. Boom, back it goes, okay? Like that, okay? And then it picks up the next round and it sticks it in, all right? So it's a diff just a different way of getting the whole thing done. This one uses the pressure that happens in that chamber to force that slide back. The others, they use basically direct blowback, but there's a delay on when it releases the slide from the barrel. So those are your three operating systems. They all work wonderfully. The engineers that came up with them were some bright folks. And that's what we have for modern firearms nowadays. Hey, if you've enjoyed this video, if it's been helpful to you and entertaining, please don't forget to hit the like button and by all means subscribe. And when you're done with that, come and visit us at askbill1911.com. Hi, Bill1911 here. Today I'd like to talk to you about something that's very important to us, and that's your safety. Do not attempt any of the things you see on our videos until you have thoroughly reviewed and understood our safety procedures. Also, if you're under 18 years of age, do not attempt any of these topics without the consent of your parent or guardian. Thank you.